Hey everybody, this is Late Night Geo with Adam Simmons, and uh, we are going to hop right into it. It's been a few weeks, but I've been pretty busy on the back end, so let's get right into it. Uh, I have, uh, there's been quite a bit of geospatial news, which I'm not going to formulate all tonight, but I'm going to hit on some hot topic items. So first off is, let's see, load up the screen here. Hold on, stand by. What do we got? Got to load up the right. Got to lo load up the right step first. <laughs> nope. Problem with this: the background does not always load up when I change scenes on this. Got to give some. Got to give these guys some feedback. All right, um, Umbra has. Uh, well, they they've done some amazing work. Work for to first talk about their satellite launch. They just recently, as of. Uh, the 30th of June launched their new SAR satellite. It's their first satellite up in the air. X-band SAR 50, uh, 50, 50 kilograms, if we got that right, mass. Uh, regardless, X-band SAR, it's their first sat SAR satellite. Um, Umbra is uh, supposed to shoot up a resolution of 25 centimeters or 0.25 meters over a 16 square kilometer area. So that will be uh, some really, really cool imagery. I can't wait to see it. And actually, you can see, I believe, that, that did they release their first light of the image? My memory is a little bit jogged tonight, but let's see if I'm going to go to their website real quick and see if they uh, release. I don't think they released their first light yet, but I know they have a bunch of test imagery um, right now that you can look through. So if I go to, let's see, learn more. The good news is you can download. Uh, no, see, I have to get through their their uh, sales firewall there on the front end. Um, they've changed the website a little bit since I've up oh, set up for early access work. Anyway, <laughs> I have. I'll have to I'll have to go back. I do have their their test imagery they use for their aerial testing of their sensor which they did over a uh, small area in California. Um, that's worth looking at. You can get an idea of what 0.25 uh, meter SAR imagery looks like. It's pretty pretty good. Can't, can't complain there. Uh, what's fascinating is to see what they do after this constellation. Uh, is is uh, up and running operationally, formally, uh, releases, releases their imagery. Good news, Umbra did add a lot of news in the last few weeks. Uh, one, they just formally went public in terms of uh, coming out of stealth mode. So that was a big deal for them as well. So I think that might've coincided with, with the launch overall. I mean, how hard it was like, who is this, who is this company who just launched? Um, the next thing about them, and we do have another piece of news with them. They just won a major, major contract. They were awarded up to, and this is up to, definitely up to, $950 million in an IDIQ contract following the SpaceX launch of their first satellite. Uh, so they have a, it's a $950 million ceiling, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, for maturation, demonstration, proliferation of capability across platforms, domains, leveraging open space systems, so basically the works, um, to enable joint all-domain command and control. So uh, this is a huge, huge deal. Uh, so they, they were awarded the contract alongside entry leaders, including Boeing, L3 Harris, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Palantir, Raytheon, and who were previously awarded their own IDIQ contracts. Umber was the only radar satellite provider announced in the most recent cohort. Okay, well, that's cool. Uh, Umbra satellite is equipped with powerful SAR payload, capable of seeing at night through dense clouds, generate high-resolution SAR imagery. We all, know, we all know that. I'm just kind of reading the uh, last paragraph right now. So um, lots, of, lots of big news with Umbra the last couple of weeks, and I expect to hear a lot more as their technology, their platform comes further online. Uh, so we're going to keep tonight kind of short. I'm going to move right on to the next topic tonight is, uh, Esri in the last, uh, actually a couple days ago, Esri released a new predictive 2050 global land cover map. So this is a task that are living Atlas, uh, product. And so they released a new high resolution 2050 global land cover. So what this is allowing you, you to do is, uh, view, see how the world's land cover will change 30 years into the future. Um, I'm sure this takes into a bunch of different things into account. Uh, looks like this is a 300 
meter pixel is classified land cover type of vulnerability of human activity to modify it. So fascinating there. So we can kind of, basically it's a massive simulation of what we expect the world to look like. I'm sure it's with massive climate change, uh, geography, uh, and various other factors going into the, uh, going into the mix. So you can check that out at livingatlas.arcgis.com slash land cover dash 2050. So, okay. What else do we got here? Um, I actually just recently, uh, was looking at Twitter feed and I found this one, uh, to illustrate the severity of California's drought NASA published a series of satellite images showing the state's rapidly disappearing snow caps and reservoirs. I have to find the original NASA uh, uh, series satellite images. This will actually take me back. If I go to the link, it'll take me back to the San Francisco Chronicle, which is locked behind their paywall. Uh, but to me, if it's just if it's NASA publishing these, I should be able to get 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 access to it for free. Um, but you can see the difference here. Uh, so this is the Orville Dam. This is in California. This is just Two years, uh, two years, two years ago. This is the Orville area, by the way. June fourth, twenty nineteen. This is June 9th, twenty twenty one. You can see how the Orville, Lake Orville, in California, has significantly gone down. This is the Orville Dam, by the way. I don't know if everybody remembers, but a qu- quite a few years ago, well, not quite a few years ago, but a few years ago, the Orville Dam uh, was at risk of actually breaking and bursting. And and a lot of people used imagery, potentially even radar, to, to, to figure out how severe it was and what potentially go. But they, they ended up they ended up fixing it for the most part. Uh, but but this this represents how severe the drought is in California right now, how water conditions are significantly just a, uh, declining, you know, it's not just a matter of the lake going down, as you can see, but literally the green in the area. I'm sure that also has to do with the uh, massive heat wave the uh, West Coast has experienced as well. So that should be, uh, but but we can see, I, I, my goal is to collect a bunch of these examples because this is happening all over the world. These massive changes from just a year or two ago. Um, and no matter what you think about climate change, uh, the world is definitely changing <laughs> even in the short term, you can see these changes from year to year. It's not just a seasonal change. There is solidly changes being made, especially from a human impact that you can see. And most impressively, you can see these changes uh, via satellite imagery uh, and see the, um, I think the one of the most notable I've shown on the show before is just the impact of what we've done to the, uh, the Brazilian uh, rainforest. And that is just shocking. Every, I have a hard time looking at it just because of how much change is going on there and uh, how much we've just deforested the entire area. So uh, let's see. I do have one more thing to bring up. Give me a second and I will show you. There's something else that uh, came up that I want to share because it is really cool. If you're looking for data, data is often um, something that people usually have to know where to look or know where to find. Uh, but something that has been not traditionally a go-to of mine, because I have a lot, quite a few data sources or data, data things that I've, uh, I've, I've, that are my go-tos, but it's become a really prominent resource for me recently as they've gotten a lot better at what they provide. Um, so, but I'll bring this up. This is, has to do with Amazon's, um, open data sponsorship program and what they have. You're welcome to grab the URL. That's why I kind of show this on the screen. So uh, let's see here. So the satellite imagery over Africa, large scale climate assemble uh, ensemble and product listings with 3D renderings are all the latest open data on AWS. So they, they've added to it basically. So they have uh, sent Landsat, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-1, data over Africa. The reason why they're doing this, yes, you can go to Landsat directory uh, uh, directly as well as the Sentinel, <laughs> it get, go download the Sentinel imagery directly. The problem with going to those repositories, if, if you've not done that before, uh, especially me as an individual, it, it, it can be a little cumbersome getting through signing up for accounts or pulling out imagery one by one. It is kind of a sluggish system going to those uh, repositories themselves since they're owned by their respective or uh, either NGOs or, or, or government organizations. Uh, the data is not as – it's accessible. It's freely accessible. They're just not as uh, simple to – to take down or, or pull, especially if you're trying to pull bulk areas in mass and do things like machine learning and things like that. Amazon's made it a lot easier putting it in their, uh, their cloud ecosystem. And, uh, let's have a look at what they have here. 
actually you can kind of see here's a preview of some of the quick things that they've added in here. Uh, so once again, the Landsat Sentinel two, Sentinel one data over Africa, and they kind of go into detail what that involves, especially around the Cape town region. Um, Sentinel two Landsat collection. Let's see Sentinel two, by the way, is, uh, I believe they're, uh, Sentinels SAR, um, uh, variant of, of the Sentinel constellation. So let's see. And that, that one's run by, I believe the European space agency. Hopefully I got that right. Um, and see, what is the Amazon Berkeley objects? A collection of over 100,000 Amazon product listings with multilingual metadata and over 350,000 unique catalog images. 8,000 listings of turntable photography showing 360 view of the product. Ooh, this could be really awesome for a lot of different reasons. So um, this isn't overhead imagery, but looks like it's more still photography or 360 camera angles. Uh, 360 photography, you can do a lot with... Uh, Man, like I said, this this is a if you if you're a machine learning engineer and interested in doing work with images in general, not just satellite imagery, this is a really good start. So let's look at the AWS Open Data Sponsorship Program since it's late night geo. I'm hopping in, just having a look at things. So you guys can take a peek. It's been a while since I've done this. Okay, so there's an application progress. I should probably see if I can log in first. Um I already have an AWS account. Why won't you let me do this? Okay, it's not that simple. Oh, I just need to log in. That's it. I already have an account. I actually uh, register. So I actually accessed this earlier. <laughs> I'm trying to find. Well, obviously, I have the key initiatives Amazon Sustainable Data Initiative which expands access to massive data sets that can be used to solve sustainable challenges and Earth on AWS. So Earth on AWS learned about building planetary scale applications in the cloud for geospatial data. So this is talking about it more. Um, you can go to that website. I just accessed this program, uh, this, this, uh, this application literally, where I was able to get in without logging in. Let me see if I can grab that real quick. It's like, I don't know why my account's not. Oh, here we go. I'll bring this one up. So you can access this. So this is the registry of open data on AWS. So it's registry.opendata.aws. And you can do, actually do a search. They have 200 data, 280 matching data sets. Lots of stuff. Once again, it's not all just imagery. It's a bunch of things. You can see at the top here, Cancer Genome Atlas, which is in itself pretty cool. Um, man, look at all this stuff. You just kind of crawl through here and come up with ideas just of what the potential is using each data set for. Just tons of it. Uh, kids first PIAC research program. I don't even know. Uh, how can you medical things kind of honestly make me nervous because of all the, uh, I don't know how you do research on medical stuff with all the HIPAA things going on. Uh, USGS Landsat COVID-19 data sets. Okay. Lots of there. Let's skip directly to imagery. Okay, we have the GOES 16 and 17 satellites. I'm not going to go through 280 like this. Ooh, SpaceNet. So if you want all the SpaceNet data, and this is actually important to note because SpaceNet, that we'll call it, they got shut down, or they say shut down. They, they, they shut themselves down uh, in... Uh, uh, it, and, and I guess Maxar is taking on the project for, I don't know what that means yet going forward. Uh, but all the personnel basically moved on from SpaceNet. So, uh, and, and so I don't think we're going to get SpaceNet as we knew it now, but at least all the data is still available. All the research is still available. So you can get, you can check that out. looks like they have a small presence here with uh, some legacy of accessing it. Radar sat one. Once again, some of these satellites have been a pain if you go to the websites, the, the government websites directly to access the imagery. Just just cumbersome. And that's the problem. And so I'm glad this is rehosted into clouds like Amazon. And plus, I know Google's done a, something similar with their uh, Earth Engine. Um, they, they got they got rehosting a lot of data on Earth Engine as well. So one of my data sets, I think a lot of my data sets, one of of the data sets that are one of my favorites that I keep track of over the years. And it didn't used to be hosted in anything except for, um, I think what NASA or NOAA's website was the years data set. 
And looks like the World Bank is helping rehost this somehow. The World Bank nighttime light data. I don't know why they call it that, but it's coming from. I don't know why the World Bank is taking ownership of this. I got to kind of read this. Maybe they took a subset of the Veers data, but it looks like this is the data from 2012 to 2020. Um, maybe it's a certain filtered version of it that they're using. It says additionally processed by the University of Michigan. Maybe they sponsor the additional processing. I don't know. Uh, but this is definitely the Veers satellite or the, um, uh, is not originally, uh, it's not owned by the world bank at all, but either way, it looks like you can access that data set. Very nice. Uh, you can read up on the documentation here. Looks like they got access to the, where it is in the S3 bucket. Anyway, this I want to I want to uh, just want to once again point out how useful accessing. Whoops, <laughs> there it is. It take me to the GitHub repository. Um, and the registry of open data on AWS. Registry that open data to AWS. They have a lot of imagery resources. A lot of if you're looking for data, I, people talk to me about you know you know their little data silos that they've discovered over the years uh, i have quite a bit myself and i i used to have a list i had, had published on project geospatial the website but when i redid the website i had to deprecate my blog and so i have to i have to bring a lot of those old posts back but a lot of the data uh, that I published in the blogs, the data sources were still, it's still relevant today. I know a lot of people, I was probably my, it's probably project geospatials most, uh, uh, was most popular blog post was related to where can I find data just to do general research? Where can I find open data? What can I find data relevant to the commercial in, uh, companies in one place where I don't have to go through all their paywalls? I just want to take a sample data and know what it's like to mess with these different resolutions um, just from a research point of view. Uh, it is it is a struggle. So we'll work to bring some of those back. Uh, but just know that Amazon and Google has those resources for you as well. So with that said, I've been on for almost 20 minutes and I could stay on longer and I, uh, I'll think about it. What is going on? Okay, there we go. Um, but, uh, tell you what, I always put this offer out there. If you're interested in coming on project geospatial late night, feel free to PM me on Twitter at, uh, project geo media. No, at, yeah. At, at project geo media, send me a Twitter message. We'll pop on, just discuss geospatial topics. If you think I got something wrong in my narrative, you're welcome to correct me. We just have a, just a general discussion on geospatial, anything news over the week. And, uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, I have a lot of good news coming up in the next couple of weeks as well. I can't wait to release to everybody. Uh, you're welcome to enjoy our regularly scheduled programs, uh, which have, uh, we have a couple came out. We just had an interview on the Adam and Daryl View the World series, which is uh, a show that I do with Daryl Murdoch, who uh, co-hosts a show uh, with me. And we bring on a lot of really, really interesting people um, from around the geospatial community, talk what projects they're working on, their different companies, what they're, uh, what they're doing, et cetera. And the, uh, the latest one that we had, uh, was covering Daria Lutke, uh, Lutke from, from a, she's the CTO of Wega and that's a company and I can't remember where her company is. It, it, it's, it's somewhere in Europe. I know that I can't remember if it's in Switzerland. Uh, anyway, she, um, she works on renewable energy monitoring. It's a really fascinating thing. And, and she basically does things like monitor and does machine learning off the trends of, uh, of uh, uh, satellite imagery that covers um, uh, satellite co imagery. So, so basically you get renewable energy sources like dams uh, and, 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 and so those, those power plants are coming dams. She'll actually look ahead and look at the different water levels to estimate the output of that power plant downstream. And she uses machine learning to do it. Anyway, she talks about her career, how she got to into it, and uh, the role of her company doing this. Very, very interesting thing. Um, and we just interviewed her well, a couple weeks ago, but I'll admit the video has been up if you caught it live, but the post for the video just recently went up on the website at the Adam and Daryl View of the World section of Project Geospatial. Another thing to look out for, by the way, is... Uh, 
We also are having, so two industry highlights have been made. Look forward to learning more about two different uh, companies coming up, by the way. And those companies are, uh, and I have those here, is a company called Albedo. And I'm not going to say what they do. You should uh, watch the show for that. And Near Space Labs. And I can't wait for everybody to see both of those things. I'll be scheduling those in the next day or two, and you'll be able to see those show those those live. I mean, we recorded those, but you're welcome to watch them uh, on the website, YouTube, and and Twitch. You'll be able to schedule watching them. All questions, you're welcome to still, even though it's a recorded episode, you're welcome to uh, watch the show, comment, and any legit or any questions relevant to those episodes that you have for those participants, I will take back and send it to them. Yeah. So you can ask them questions. You're welcome to leave your name, your, uh, or your just email address, or I can potentially put you in contact with them. Uh, so let me know. Let's see. I think that's it that I'll want to say about what's going on with us at the moment. Uh, let's see nothing in the chat room tonight, which is okay. Once again, we've been a little bit out of it in the last couple of weeks, which is okay. I got to do a lot of work to get things organized for a schedule. So the show actually does have some downtime. I hate to admit it. So I can get things organized, get some new guests scheduled and, uh, and work on some other things. Oh, one more tidbit. I keep on saying this is the last thing, but we, uh, we are doing, we are, we all, we do plan on helping, uh, the American geographical uh, society out again this year with their geography 2050 that's happening in uh, November. So look forward to that in the next uh, four months as well. Uh, doing a lot of planning and doing that. That was a very successful store as uh, show. And we will, uh, you can see I've been periodically playing on the archive channel, the, um, their oceans, uh, geography 2050 themed event from last year too, that we helped them with. So Anyway, um, I'm Adam Simmons with Project Geospatial. Hit me up anytime. And if anybody PMs me, happy to come on again tonight to have a discussion with you or any other late night for a late night geo. We'll talk to you next time.